You may have heard of the Pineapple Express, a massive amount of moisture up in the atmosphere that can cause a lot of flooding and destruction. Now, scientists at the University of California, San Diego, have created a way to categorize these events, much like hurricanes. Cronkite News reporter Jordan Evans has more. Out here in the western U.S., rain and snow contribute to most of our water supplies, and most of that rain and snow falls during the winter, largely from weather phenomenon known as atmospheric rivers. However, too little or too much precipitation can cause significant economic losses. I talked with a team of researchers in La Jolla to learn about a new scale they have created for these atmospheric rivers. The beaches in La Jolla, California are not only home to the sea lions, but also to a team of researchers at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. They've developed a new tool to help forecasters and other parties plan for major rainfall events. Three, two, one. If an AR is about to make landfall, we can say that it's generally hazardous and that it will result in some flooding and that will provide more information to forecasters and potentially emergency managers as well. So before we get into the details of the scale itself, let me show you exactly what makes up an atmospheric river. And they are literally rivers of water in the atmosphere, several thousand feet up above the Pacific Ocean. And this is picked up by strong winds aloft known as the jet stream. And when that moisture gets rammed into the mountains along the west coast, then we see those clouds begin to form and eventually heavy precipitation for areas that just don't receive a lot of it red line is the temperature and the green line is the relative humidity. Weather balloons are just one tool these researchers use to determine the strength of an atmospheric river. During the winter season, when we actually have storms, atmospheric rivers coming through, uh, launching the radio sons in those conditions gives us really novel information on the structure of the atmosphere. And those observations are actually the fundamental basis of numerical weather prediction, which is where your forecast really starts. And balloons are just one piece of the puzzle. The other piece is a little bit more involved. Just like in hurricanes, the U.S. Air Force will send planes into these atmospheric rivers over the ocean to get readings days in advance. And they'll release drop sons, which are really similar to the radio son that you just saw launched from the pier. And the aircraft then report the measurements directly back to the national centers uh, that do the modeling. Balloon launches and aircraft flights are key to determining the scale of an atmospheric river. The data collected helps answer several questions for forecasters. How intense is the integrated vapor transport going to be over this local area and how long will it last? And that helps us to then categorize this particular event that's impending based on the scale that was developed. And atmospheric rivers don't just impact the coastal states. Here in the southwest, we sometimes feel the effects too. Arizona, for instance, was hit hard by one in January of 2010. We had a series of several weather systems that moved across the state. They were associated with atmospheric rivers. This brought about three inches of rain to the Phoenix area. Flagstaff had about four feet of snow. There were roof collapses. There was flooding a lot of locations, uh, really strong winds. So it had a, a very large impact on the state. And sometimes atmospheric rivers are labeled as drought busters. In fact, the 2010 event in Arizona nearly erased severe drought from the state. More recently, California's six-year-long historic drought was completely erased in 2017, thanks to a series of atmospheric rivers. For states that rely on precipitation for water supplies, Michael Anderson with the California Department of Water Resources says the scale could be a vital tool for water planning. Looking at the combination of both integrated vapor flux and uh, duration and being able to describe from a water management perspective that this gives us a way to describe that balance between how much is uh, benefit and how much is hazard. So the next step, forecasters need to test the scale with upcoming atmospheric river events before it can become operational in the National Weather Service. What we would need to see from there going forward, uh, what does that necessarily mean? What does that, you know, if you're going to be impacted by these different categories of atmospheric rivers, what are the impacts? Now, because the National Weather Service is currently not using the scale in their forecasts, you can check out the category of an upcoming atmospheric river event on the Center for Western Weather and Water Extremes website. In the Broadcast Center, Jordan Evans, Cronkite News.